Welcome night episode one is finally out and it's time to talk full spoilers on this damn thing Holy shit, we got a lot to talk about guys Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so we can keep talking Moon Knight every single night when it premieres Because I will be right here and make sure to also leave your guys' comments, your theories, your thoughts, all sorts of things like that God, this was amazing. Um, I have been so excited for Moon Knight as a little bit of a background story for me. Moon Knight is one of the characters that I grew up reading and I just fell in love with him. Like, I know a lot of people used to say that he was kind of like, they made him because of Batman. But he had his own little tweaks to him, of course, with the multiple different personalities. And of course, even before it was just multiple different identities. And nowadays it's multiple personality disorder. And they're very much taking and picking from, of course, the older Moon Knight comics to the more modern day adaptions of it. And this first episode was everything I could want and more to suck me into this. That is something that I was really much looking forward to is everything that this show contains. Not just the direction and the story, but also really much the care taken into here. It really much feels like they're adapting Steven and Mark so well, as well as the multiple personality issue that he is having and the torture and terror inside the modern adaption of this two live action. And for me in this first episode, there's so much to really much rave about the horror tones to it, the thrilling psychological nature. They were describing the show as Fight Club meets Indiana Jones. And that's very much kind of what it's feeling like, you know, just from the beginning, you know, you see Oscar Isaac come out he wakes up and he has this thing around his leg he has this brace he has sand all around him and he has this tape and he you know from there he kind of just like as us as Moon Knight fans know okay he's trying to make sure that he's not leaving that he's not switching his personalities that he's not maybe night walking daydreaming whatever it may be but then he you know he goes to his job we start to learn a little bit more about his life and how his style is. Maybe this girl likes him. and But he's kind of a weirdo. Like, he's just, like, there's something off about him. And the thing that I love about it is first the makeup department, the way that they make him look tired, was quite fascinating because as says no is that he's not sleeping. When he goes to sleep, pretty much his body moves over to Mark. And I think that's a really interesting way is just the little touches to detail they have in here. And for me, one of the things that I love about this episode is, of course, when he goes back, he's kind of talking to himself about, like, I can't, like, you know, it's kind of a big red flag, especially when he's talking to the statue or the person as a statue. And he's talking to him saying, like, yeah, it's kind of like a big red flag, you know, if I bring a girl home and I have this brace at the end of my bed that straps me down. And, you know, it's not the best thing to say, but, you know, we go, we see him go home, we see him try to relax and really much relax himself. But as that is going on, it's really not working for him totally because what happens up happening is boom, flips, editing, and he's in the middle of field, his jaws all fucked up. He has to shift it back in. And then these people are shooting at him and he goes into his town and we see Ethan Hawke, who is menacing scary he's never played a villain yet before and he is tremendous in it and we feel it in here even from the opening scene when he breaks the glass and he pours it into his shoes just that entire scene is very creepy and you don't know what's going on and that's kind of what i got this feeling of is that something like, like wandavision gave me was i didn't understand what was going on i didn't know what was going to be going on and Moon Knight kind of contains that same thing where people are going to be really much bickering and talking with one another. It was like, was that real? Was that all in his head? Was that not? And, you know, as we see in this entire sequence, it really much becomes, he keeps phasing in and out. And the blood in his hand, holy crap, that's like Daredevil Punisher level type of blood. And I think this is like, truly enough, some of the glorious things that we have seen Moon Knight have yet, and I, or not even Moon Knight, but really much the MCU itself, and speaking of the MCU, this does not feel like it is in the MCU, there's some quirks here and there with the humor, but it really much does resolve back to the earlier Moon Knight comics that did have those quirks of, of course, the character and kind of some of the humor within there, but very much far and few between, this very much is more on the modern adaptions, and is in more in the vein of what Charlie Cox's Daredevil and John Berthnall's The Punisher and just kind of the tone of those was very much in this. Now, I don't know if that'll shift and change throughout episodes two, three, and four, but I I loved the rest of this. And of course, then him waking up and he's like, oh, I'm alive. And he ends up going on the date and finding out all that and just finding these little differences and ended up finding out that he has been gone for two days, which then I thought he was going to lose his job, but apparently he didn't. 
Then, of course, we see he finds the phone, doesn't really know who he's talking to. He's very much freaking out. Then Ethan Hawke shows up on the bus. He's like, holy shit, what's going on? Goes inside there. All these people are working for him. He has this great confrontation with him. And it led up to him doing inventory. We see this weird Sphinx character kind of following him around. And very much so, it becomes a full out where he's in the bathroom. He's trying to hide. And he pretty much himself in the mirror looks at him and says, give me control. I can protect us. And he gives into it. Moon Knight forms. And when that thing, like the Jackal or whatever it's called, comes out and really much tries to pull itself out. And you just see Moon Knight dragging it and pummeling it to the ground. I was sold on there. I knew the episode was going to end right there. And it was a perfect ending. It was a perfect first episode, pilot, whatever you want to say. And I didn't even get to mention the, I think the god's name is Khonshu. I might be pronouncing that wrong. So don't correct me again. Only seen episode one. I need to hear how they actually pronounce it in the show. I've only been reading the name of it. But it's creepy and it's scary. Like when it's standing behind him and just the narration of it, I'm very curious to see who's actually voicing that. Th this is just something I'm so in love with. And I cannot wait to have these discussions with you guys down below in the comment section. So leave a comment, hit that like, subscribe button. Let's keep talking Moon Knight, Marvel, and the MCU all around. Again, I really do appreciate each and every one of you guys watching this. So again, let's keep talking it. I'll see you guys next week. And of course, until next time, stay classy.